Hey guys, it's Keon, and today I'm going to be talking about Marlon Moraes, who recently announced that he is going to be retiring from the sport of MMA. And this is coming off of a four-fight losing streak, which all ended by a TKO or a KO. And yeah, many people agree with this decision, so do I. I think Marlon's best days are definitely behind him, and it's sad to see someone who was so good and so promising at one point fall down like this but this is MMA and that's the case for many of these fighters but of course a lot of people tend to remember the bad or the most recent and that was Marlon's four fight losing streak which sucks because it's not a good representation of him as a fighter and his career as a whole and that's why I wanted to make this video how good was Marlon Morice actually and I haven't done one of these in a while so I'm excited to do it and I think Marlon is a great choice for that because he's had some some amazing moments in MMA and overall some amazing highlights. So let's talk about it. Marlon began his MMA career on April 14th, 2007 at the age of 18. In his first 12 fights, he went 7-4-1. and one. So he wasn't really finding too much success early on. But then he entered a new MMA promotion called the World Series of Fighting, who are known today as the PFL, the Professional Fighters League. And it was in this promotion where Marlon truly made a name for himself and started to gain recognition as he became one of the main faces of the World Series of Fighting. He had 11 fights with the promotion and won all of them. And in the process, he became the World Series of Fighting Bantamweight Champion and he defended that belt five times. And in these fights, he truly looked unstoppable as he looked very good on the feet with his Muay Thai, was able to finish fights with one shot and his kicks, especially to the legs, were brutal. But even on the ground, his jiu-jitsu was wonderful as he was able to bring the fight down and lock up submissions. Plus, when you mix all the this with his strength, his speed, and athleticism, he was a terrifying opponent for any fighter. And most of these fights were one-sided and ended by finish, except for his first fight against Josh Hill, which was a back-and-forth battle, and this is where we saw Marlon face the most adversity in the World Series of Fighting. But then the two fought again a year later, and Marlon finished him in the second round with a highlight reel head kick and punches. And yes, it was in the World Series of Fighting, and the competition wasn't top-level compared to other promotions like the UFC. But still, Marlon built enough momentum for the UFC to take notice. So after defending his belt for a fifth time at World Series of Fighting 34, Marlon decided to become a free agent. And that's when the UFC signed him to their promotion in April of 2017. And although there was some good hype around Marlon for his debut at UFC 212, he ended up losing in a back and forth fight to Rafael Asuncao by split decision. And even though he bounced back with a win against John Dodson by split decision, people were still not convinced that this guy can become a name in the UFC bantamweight division. But then he fought Aljamain Sterling, and it took Marlon 67 seconds to connect with a knee that knocked Aljo out. And this was like a highlight reel type of knockout. And this was the start of an incredible run for Marlon, as his next fight was a main event against Jimmy Rivera. And his momentum continued as he knocked Jimmy out in 33 seconds with a head kick and punches. And this snapped Jimmy's 20-fight win streak. After this win, he fought Rafael Asuncao for a second time, and it was clear that the winner was going to fight for the title next. And in contrast to their first fight, which was back and forth, this one was one-sided as Marlon finished the fight in the first by dropping Rafael with punches, and this led to a guillotine choke that forced a tap. So Marlon was now on a four-fight win streak in the UFC, and the hype surrounding him at this time was huge. Many believed that he was going to become the next UFC bantamweight champion, and with him fighting flyweight champion Henry Cejudo for the vacant UFC bantamweight championship, Marlon was the slight favorite in that fight, and it looked so early as he was connecting with a bunch of leg kicks and some shots that looked close to finishing the fight. But I gotta give credit to Henry because he showed how tough he was in this fight by eating some huge shots but still coming back with shots of his own. And although Marlon was coming forward strong in the first two rounds, by the third it was clear that his gas tank was diminishing. So Henry took advantage by bringing the fight down and this led to ground and pound that forced the ref to step in. After this defeat, Marlon bounced back with a fight against former featherweight champion Jose Aldo, who was making his debut at 135, and this was a back and forth fight that many believed Jose won. But by the end, Marlon was the winner by split decision. And although it was a controversial win, it was the last win of Marlon's career. Because in his next four fights, he lost to Cordy Sanhagen, Rob Font, Marab Devalishvili, and Song Yadong by TKO or KO. And although Marlon had his moments in these fights, especially in his fight against Marab where he looked very close to finishing him, it was clear that he was unable to take big shots like he once did. 
So after his most recent defeat to Song Yadong, Marlin decided to call it a career on April 13th, 2022. And like I said, a lot of people remember Marlin for this four fight losing streak, but they should also remember that he was a true bantamweight contender. And at one point, a bantamweight champion in the World Series of Fighting. So after going 23, 10 and one, how good was Marlon Moraes actually? And to me, he cemented his place as one of the best bantamweights to never capture UFC gold. This guy was an all around complete fighter. Of course, his Muay Thai was his strong suit. Not only was he fast on the feet, but he carried a lot of power with every strike. The punches, the kicks, they all looked brutal and it looked like he was throwing with bad intentions every time. And he was a dangerous guy to throw bombs with because one shot and that fighter was down. But even his ground game, he was able to bring the fight down and once there, he was brutal with his submissions. And honestly, I wish towards the end of his career, he brought the fight down more often and tried to win by submission. Because as good as he still was on the feet, after all the battles, his chin was gone. He was just unable to take shots like he once did. And that's the case for a lot of fighters. They're very tough early on in their careers, but once they get cracked, they're no longer the same. And I'd have to attribute that to the Henry Cejudo fight because Henry stayed in there and ate some of his best shots, which most guys would go down to. But Henry didn't and he connected on the feet as well and Marlon wasn't able to take it. He also wasn't able to take the pressure like he once did. Once these guys started to move forward against him, it would tire him out and by the second round, his gas tank depleted big time. And I think that was also an issue. He would go all out in round one and if he didn't get the finish, then he'd face troubles with his cardio. Maybe not so much against lower ranked competition, but against the bigger names in the UFC, it was difficult for him. And it sucks because had he worked on his cardio and changed his fighting style into a more grappling approach, I think he still could have been competitive today. But with his chin completely gone and with him continuing to keep the fight on the feet, it wasn't working for him anymore. But I still don't think that's going to take away from all that he accomplished. Like I said, alongside Justin Gaethje, Marlon was the face of the World Series of Fighting. And with how strong the PFL is going today, we have to credit Marlon for helping the promotion get there. But even in the UFC, those first round finishes against Aljamain Sterling, Jimmy Rivera, and Rafael Asuncel was truly an exciting time in the 135 pound division. So even though he didn't capture UFC gold, he cemented his place as a top bantamweight contender. That's why I would give his MMA career an 8.5 out of 10. It's a shame that it's ending so early as he's only 33 years old. But in fight years, this guy has been through a lot. And it's unfortunate that a majority of his career took place in the World Series of Fighting. Had he entered the UFC earlier, I think he would have became the bantamweight champion. And although he became a UFC fighter at the age of 29, he already had a ton of mileage under his belt. So as short as his run as a top level bantamweight in the UFC was, it was still a very fun one. And hey, those wins against Aljamain Sterling and Jose Aldo have aged wonderfully. And I give him credit for calling it a career at this point because a lot of other fighters would have continued to fight, whether it was in the UFC or in another promotion. But with this chapter done, I wish Marlon Marais the best in whatever he does next. But what do you think? How good was Marlon Marais actually? And what was your favorite moment from his career? But that's a lot for now, so I'll see you in my next one.